Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Nelson. I'm the youth pastor at the Grove Church in North Dallas, and I'm really excited to be with you today, tonight. I don't really know exactly when you're watching this, you know, through Instagram Live, through Facebook Live, or maybe even the YouTube, YouTube, link, YouTube link. I'm just excited that you're with us. Uh, welcome to Students Night Live. So I don't know if you're like me, but my routine has been completely upended. You know, as of last week, I was in class like normal. Uh, I was having to go into the church, into the office. You know, we had youth group in person. Uh, even last week, we were basically uh, having youth group. We were set up some Xboxes and we were playing uh, Fortnite and COD and uh, Minecraft and everything like that. But this week, everything is, is completely different, right? Uh, this week, we're Practice, practicing social distancing. Uh, we're, some of us are, are in quarantine. Uh, maybe you did get off to, to your cabin and you're stuck there now. Maybe you did get, get down to Mexico and now you're stuck in Mexico for three weeks. I don't know what your situation is, but I bet it looks completely different than your normal routine. And with that, I, I really found myself with a lot more free time. And instead of being uh, more productive with that f free time, uh, I found myself scrolling through Instagram uh, more than I normally do. And so with Instagram, I think there's a lot of, of good things with Instagram, right? In this time, it allows us to be more connected, right? Uh, we can see what our friends are going through. Uh, we can see uh, outside of our four walls. You know, right now you might be stuck in your house and you might want to know what's going on with the rest of the world. And Instagram is a great tool to help us figure out what is happening in the world, uh, what it looks like, you know, uh, maybe what's going on in the NFL, you know, free agency and where Tom Brady went and all that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe it's figuring out, you know, uh, what are your friends doing for, for their spring break? Did they get to go to spring break? Uh, what's their setup for uh, online classes? What does that look like? Uh, I know for my friends, uh, we've started a new hashtag, uh, hashtag Corona Cuisine. Uh, just trying to figure out what other people are, are cooking, uh, you know, how to <laughs> create really crazy uh, pots and uh, dishes with just the, the ingredients you have on hand. Uh, and so it's been a really fun thing to see what everybody else is doing when, you know, Walmart doesn't have and Kroger doesn't have uh, food anymore. How do you make food uh, with just the ingredients you have on hand? But with Instagram, there's actually some, some problems, right? And the problems with Instagram is that I think it's, it's kind of influenced our relationships as well. Uh, so a couple of the big problems that I see with Instagram is that a lot of it is, is super filtered. Uh, you know, it used to be, you know, you check, make sure you had the, the Valencia or the Gingham or even Sierra, Sierra and <laughs> maybe even now you're to the point where you have apps uh, that filter your, your pictures before you even get to, to Instagram <laughs> on the next level filtering. And so I think that's really influenced our relationships as well. Uh, we come to each other filtered maybe. Another problem that I see is that we only show our highlight reel, right? When you post on Instagram, you're not gonna post everything. You know, you're not gonna post uh, your daily life and uh, everything that's going on because that would just be way too much. When you post, it's, it's normally, you know, your, your vacations, right? If you got to the beach, or maybe if you did get to that ski trip, ski trip in, in February, whatever it was, or maybe it's that really awesome hike you took with your class, you know, that's the, stu that's the sort of stuff you're gonna post on Instagram. And so we only show our, our highlight reel. And maybe we only show our highlight reel to our friends. And maybe something even worse is we only show our highlight reel to God. And so it's really influenced our relationships uh, more than we realize. And the last problem with, with Instagram that I see is that it's really for self-gratification, right? When we post, we're really trying to get likes and comments for ourselves. Right, trying to get more, more followers and trying to be an influencer. And it's really all for ourselves. It's not really serving anyone else. It's really for self-gratification. And so this problem with relationships, it's really influenced our relationships both with our friends. And then the bigger problem is it's influenced our relationship with God. And so this is kind of the culture that we're, we're dealing with today. You know, Instagram is kind of uh, taken over a lot of our culture and really how we have relationships. And this phenomenon is, is nothing new. The scripture that we're going to look at today uh, really has the same problem. 
Uh, the people that we're going to look at really are influenced by their culture on how they should have relationships with God. And so the scripture we're going to look at is, is from Matthew. Uh, it's coming from uh, chapter 6. And so this comes from uh, a series of chapters called the Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus has taken his disciples. Uh, he's gone to the top of a mountain. And he's really bringing these, this group of insiders close and teaching them how they should live in this world. And in our scripture, specifically in chapter 6, he's talking against how the world is having relationships. So at this time, devout Jews, when they were having a relationship with God, what they thought that meant is they were supposed to do three different things. They were supposed to give to the poor, they were supposed to pray, and then they were also supposed to fast. And so in this, Jesus is talking specifically uh, about those basically acts of piety that they were doing, those acts that were, uh, if you did this, you checked off the box and you were closer to God. But if you didn't do these things, you were actually further away from God. And so through these acts, that was how they determined whether you had a relationship with God or not. And so as we look at this, Jesus isn't really thinking whether they're doing this or not. He's saying, when, when you do this, do it in the correct way. So essentially what he's saying is, when you're trying to have a relationship with God, I want you to do it in the correct way. And so we're going to jump in uh, Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 5. So again, this is Jesus. He's bringing his, his disciples close, and he's teaching them how they should have a relationship with God in the correct way. So he says this in verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward, reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So what he's saying there is, you know, the hypocrites, who he's talking against, they like to get on the street corners, and they like to pray really loud prayers, boisterous prayers, basically asking everyone, look at me, right? Just like an Instagram Whenever we post something, we're telling everyone, look at me. Look at what I'm doing. The hypocrites are doing the same thing. They're saying, look at this. Like, look at this wonderful prayer that I'm praying to God. This, you know, I'm trying to connect with God. I'm having a relationship in this way. Look at what I'm doing. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. Don't be like the hypocrites and, and do this. He said there's a better way to do this. He says, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And so Jesus is saying, it's not for everyone else. This is not to imp impress everybody else. It's not for your own self-gratification. It's not filtered. It's tr truly authentic. It is vulnerable. It is, uh, you come with your concerns as well as your celebrations. And it's just you and God. That's how you have an authentic relationship. That's how you should pray to God. And we're actually going to jump down a little bit further into to Matthew 6 and look at verse 16. And so in verse 16, Jesus says this. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they will receive their reward in full. But when you fast... Put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father, who, is, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So again, Jesus is talking about, against the hypocrites, about what they're doing currently. You know, currently they, they make themselves look awful, and they're showing off, man, I'm fasting, so I'm, I'm doing this, I'm trying to have a relationship with God, look at what I'm doing and again, Jesus says, no, 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 that's not what we're here for. He says, you don't have to do this. He says, wash your face. You know, make sure that you look good when you fast. He says, you don't have to, to put a filter on. You don't have to put your highlight reel on. You just have to be authentic. And so through this, this is really kind of the point of, of how we should have a relationship with God. It comes down to being really authentic. 
And so a question that I was thinking about is like, what, what does that mean? Like, what does that look like for us right now? How, what does it mean to be an authentic relationship with God? So I think we have a really amazing opportunity to do exactly what the scripture is saying. That instead of, as the hypocrites did, go out onto the street corners and, and pray this lofty prayer, we can do exactly what the scripture is saying is go into your room. Close the door and pray to your Father. Be really vulnerable and authentic and real about what you're feeling right now. Maybe you're feeling like, man, my routine is, is completely upended. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to go back to school. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see my friends before I graduate. You know, I had this really wonderful uh, plan for eighth grade. You know, it was going to be awesome at Good Shepherd or Highland Park or parish or cistercian or whatever it was you know i'm the eighth grader i'm kind of the big man on campus but now but now i don't even get that time with my friends so in that bring that to god in prayer ask him what what is going on like what why are you letting this happen like what what does this mean be really authentic in your relationship and i think another thing it really comes down to is that in the scripture, one last thing that I want to point out is that Jesus talks against the hypocrites. And a lot of the time, Jesus is talking against the Pharisees, right? And we see the Pharisees, they're the religious leaders, they're doing X, Y, Z to, to impress God. Um, but Jesus specifically uses hypocrites in this. And it's really important because hypocrites in the Greek, in the original language, which is Greek, it meant actor. And so what Jesus is saying is, don't act when you do this. Don't be an actor when you try and have a relationship with God. It means that it has to be authentic. It has to be vulnerable. And ultimately, what is your motivation? Are you just acting to check off the box, just like they were doing here? They're just having a relationship based on what they were supposed to do. You know, they're supposed to, to give to charity, to pray, to fast. They're just checking off these boxes. So what is your motivation? Are you just doing these things because it's expected of you? Or are you doing this because you really want a real relationship with God? And so that's our challenge for, for this week, is to look at our motivation and to try and be authentic with God and what we're thinking, what we're feeling, uh, what we're facing right now. And in the upcoming weeks, I don't know what that's going to look like, uh, but I know that that's what God wants from us. God wants us to be authentic in our relationship with him. Thanks, guys. Uh, I hope that you have some wonderful time with your small group leaders uh, discussing this message, and we'll see you next week at Student Night Live.